Hello, everyone. Today we have a question from Faith. Have faith, everyone. It's good to have faith in life when you're doing, when you're working on your finances. You know what I'm saying? So, shout out to Faith. Her question is Thank you for your YouTube class, Denzel, on velocity banking. My husband and I are Christian and we find ourselves not where we thought we would be at retirement. Sounds like we're in a bind. I have been researching Velocity Banking. I'm trying to understand the differences between putting my cash flow directly on the amortized loan, right? So she's talking about just, you know, debt snowball, making extra payments like everyone else does in the world, or using the HELOC strategy, so Velocity Banking. She says, I used an average daily balance calculator on the internet to try to simulate the situation. I was only dealing with the extra cash flow amount. Ding, 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 that's your problem. When you're only using the extra cash flow per month to simulate velocity banking up against that snowball, you're not going to get accurate numbers. So that's your first mistake right there. So uh, let's see, it came out very close, yeah to if I had just put the extra money on the amortized loan. Correct. How can I calculate the difference that putting your paycheck on the HELOC to take advantage of that time in lower interest paid over the years? My brain just cannot quite be convinced because I can't see it. And if you can't see something, you ain't gonna get it, especially when it comes to financial numbers. You gotta, you really do have to see it to believe it. You know what I mean? There's some things that we do have to see to believe. And others, like faith, sometimes you just got to walk by faith, not by sight. Okay? So, do you know of a way I can calculate this on a calculator that is affordable? Yes, there are some uh, uh, good velocity banking calculators out there. Some do cost like four or five grand. No doubt. There's people selling these you know, expensive uh, software, whatever. Me, on the other hand, listen. Give me a give me a sheet of paper and a pen, and we'll go. We'll get to work. I, I can save you thousands. You know, uh, but some people like their calculators. No problem. Um, there is one uh, resource on my website that you can check out. It's a Velocity Banking calculator. Um, it's like a monthly membership fee. It's a, a gentleman that I connected with. When I first started, you know, uh, making videos on Velocity Banking, so you can check that out. Uh, when you become a client, I have a client that created a Velocity Banking calculator, and I give those, I give it out to my clients for free. So I don't, I don't mind that. But um, when I'm working with you one-on-one, -on -one, I find it highly effective to just write things down, especially when it comes to numbers. So you, like you see it, you're writing it and you retain the information more. It, it, I just find that to be so effective in every uh, situation, every client that I work with. So she also says, we have an unusual situation right now and are in transition, desperately low in discretionary funds, okay? Sounds like we're in the weeds, backs against the wall, all right? So we gotta make some moves. You have, she has one small fourplex property that we're trying to get paid off and currently that's what we have for retirement. We have very little income this year, which falls on the heels of closing a business that did not go so well. I truly believe that God has much more for us to do on this earth. He certainly does. I'm trying to figure out if this principle is part of that. It certainly is. I want to finish strong and accomplish all he wants us to. God bless you and give you wisdom beyond your years. Note, I now see there is a one-on-one -on -one coaching in your master class. I will look into that as well, but I am sort of numbers savvy capable. Okay. I would love to know if there is a calculator to calculate the saving of utilizing the paycheck amount. I think that's the piece that I'm missing. Um, here's the thing. Here's what I'm seeing and, and you guys that are watching, you guys can get a little idea behind this when uh, I'm seeing a little bit of a defense, right? She's justifying like everything that she's doing. So, you know, 
just saying, oh, Denzel, you know, all I really need is the calculator and I'm good. Yeah, most people say that. And look in the position that we're in. We're approaching retirement and we don't have the results that we want. So you're either, you know, in your late 40s or 50s, right? And if you're telling me that all you need is a calculator and not coaching and mentoring and, you know, discipline and things like that and, and an accountability partner, you got another thing coming. All right. So if we expect to get rapid change, rapid results, you're going to need someone on your side. So it's more than just the calculator. And I'm going to lay that out right now. Yeah, there's calculators out there. Yeah, you can watch a couple videos and, and it's very helpful. But if you're talking about making a massive change, having immense amount of wealth for retirement and you're approaching retirement, you're going to have to make some radical changes in your life. You're going to have to invest in yourself. You're going to have to unlearn and relearn what you think you know about money. That's first and foremost, Faith. All right. So now let's go into the beginning part of your question, identifying the major differences, you know, between dumping my cash flow, uh, doing debt snowball or velocity banking. How, you know, you seem to be running numbers, but you're not getting uh, uh, accurate, accurate results. So here's the first and foremost thing. When we're doing velocity banking, we're using your whole entire income, not just your cash flow per month in terms of leveraging the debt, paying off debt, making chunk payments. So if I have a HELOC, we both have the same mortgage, 30 years, 200,000, 300,000, same interest rate, same everything, same payment, okay? Same cash flow. The only difference is I have a HELOC, you don't. This HELOC that we use, we're going to strategize a certain amount of money that I'm going to initially take out. This is initial capital that I just created out of thin air to tackle that debt that you have, that mortgage. Understand that when I make this big payment towards the mortgage the first month, right, that I am going to go at an accelerated rate faster than you are, just making extra payments. So you need to understand the primary difference between that. Also, at the beginning of a mortgage, working with me one-on-one, -on -one, there are other things that we do in place that that snowball does not cover, which also gives us a leg up, such as filling out your W-4 properly, making sure we are not overpaying the IRS on taxes. So if I can recoup cash flow there, that's what I'm going to do. Another thing that we do in Velocity Banking is we redirect all cash flow. If you have money going into savings, money going in retirement account, we're going to redirect that money because I can have more cash flow working for me because the HELOC is going to act as my savings account, my uh, interest earning, right? I'm going to be earning and saving interest at the same time when I'm doing velocity banking. So it's going to be used as uh, the money is going to be used multiple times. Okay. Here's another thing that we do when we're doing velocity banking is I'm going to look at your mortgage and see if we can remove escrow from the mortgage. So instead of having the mortgage company pay for my property taxes, I'm going to take the responsibility over and pay that myself. And being that I have a HELOC with initial capital to pay that expense for the whole entire year, rather than me sending the monthly payment to the mortgage company and having that money sit there and do nothing for the entire year, I could have that money sitting in my HELOC waiting to get used. Meanwhile, I can be using that same money to be paying down the mortgage. So removing escrow is going to help me go faster. So these are, these are leg ups in terms of, uh, when you're, when you're matching number to number. Okay. Another thing is if I make a chunk payment, let's say every six to seven months on your mortgage, understand that that very next month that I make the payment, right, on that mortgage is gonna be significantly less interest than the previous month. Also, if you have PMI on your home, I would be able to remove PMI faster 
than if I was just making extra payments each and every month. So that's another thing. So by removing escrow early, by paying 20% on my property earlier than extra payments, I can remove PMI faster than the other guy that just makes extra payments on his property. So these are all things that we factor in that the calculator may not pick up right away because you're just putting the mortgage payment, mortgage payment, you're putting an extra chunk, and then you're showing, you're doing a uh, simple interest calculator, right, where you you took 20, 30,000 or so from the HELOC, right, and put it on that amortized loan, and you put it in the calculator, and it shows, okay, great. And then every other month, you're just paying the regular payment. Meanwhile, on the HELOC, you're only showing paying, paying the monthly uh, payment along with the cash flow towards that debt. That's a mistake because we're supposed to be dumping all of our income over there and then only taking out what we need to pay our bills, our expenses. And if I have my income sitting in that HELOC throughout the whole entire month and slowly taking money out, I'm paying barely anything in interest over there. And because I made that chunk payment on the property, whatever interest I saved over here is gonna offset whatever interest I pay over there. So it's as if I had zero borrowing costs to begin with. Okay, so these are big things that we wanna factor in. So these are the primary differences when you're just paying extra payments using your cash flow versus using the HELOC and having no borrowing cost when we're leveraging the debt, okay? And the speed that it takes me to pay off the HELOC when I make that chunk payment, when you're working with me, is we're gonna look at a range, like six to nine months being the max, four to six being the lowest, uh, which determines my chunk payment. Here's another thing that I constantly do with my clients is I keep the HELOC in debt. So I'm not really paying off the HELOC before I make the next chunk because of the amount of leveraged debt that I put into that HELOC, okay, I'm paying significantly less interest over there than I am on the property. So the more money that I can pull from here to pay there, save thousands, offset it there, the better I am, okay? Another thing is after like, a year or two of doing velocity banking on that same mortgage versus the other guy doing uh, extra payments on his property. So let's say we're ahead of him or her on the PMI. We removed escrow. We redirected cash flow. We filled out our W-4 properly. Okay. Another thing is eventually I get to a point in the mortgage where maybe I've removed about 30, 40% of what I owe. I can potentially look into replacing the whole entire mortgage into a first position HELOC. That depends on your income, expenses, and cash flow. But that is something that I do look at once I've paid about 40, 50% of the initial mortgage off. Just by turning that whole entire thing into a first position HELOC, now I'm going to go even faster than the guy that's just paying extra payments towards the property where they have the escrow still attached to there. They still got the PMI on there. So all of those things is what you have to factor in. One more thing I wanna mention, when you're putting in your numbers in these calculators, you have to make sure that you're putting just the mortgage payment, the principal and interest payment because let's say your mortgage is 2,000 a month, out of that 2,000, 500 of that goes towards PMI and escrow. So if you put in the calculator, 2,000 is the mortgage, that calculator is gonna be not accurate towards your actual amortization calculator that the mortgage company gives you, the amortization schedule, I mean. So you have to make sure you're looking at your amortization schedule and just putting in 
the mortgage payment, the principal and interest, so you can get an accurate number there, okay? So that when you're showing the extra payment, right, 2000 or 1000 a month, whatever it is, that I'm uh, accurately recording those numbers, okay? At the end of the day, when we're doing velocity banking, all we do, right, velocity banking guys, we compare it to debts. No, I don't know if all velocity banking people, coaches, experts out there do this, but what I do with my clients is I run a debt snowball, you know, concept. I, I run it. I see, okay, if I was to just take my cash flow each and every month and just pay extra towards my debt, I would be debt free in X years. Let's say it says 12 as opposed to 30. Well, if that's the case, then all I got to do with Velocity Banking is beat 12 years and then I win. That's all I got to do. So if I have a total of $12,000 in cash flow per year, so it's 1000 a month, then I know that all I can do with that snowball is pay an extra 12000 towards my mortgage. Whereas Velocity Banking with a HELOC, all I have to do is make two chunk payments of $12,000 in that year for a total of $24,000. And now I'm ahead of that snowball by $12,000 in principle. That's all I got to do. Okay. Now, to get accurate numbers, I would have to look at that person's income expense, debt, and cash flow overall. And then we structure a chunk payment so that we can make the chunk payment at the beginning of the year, have it paid off within six months, make another chunk payment to have within 12 months more principal than whatever my yearly cash flow was and still be able to pay off the debt on that HELOC the same year and keep the rhythm flowing. By doing this, like I said, we're able to get a leg up on those other things. PMI, escrow, W4, redirecting cash flow. These are vital, vital things that we do in Velocity Banking that Debt Snowball does not cover or does not do. Okay, Faith? So I hope that was very, very detailed, very informative. I hope that helps other people watching that are, you know, uh, um, looking at this velocity banking concept, seeing whether it works or not, or if it makes sense, or whatever the case may be. Uh, I hope that was really, really detailed for you guys. My name is Denzel Rodriguez. I'm your personal finance geek. On this channel, we cover velocity banking, infinite banking, and kingdom authority. And I hope you have a wonderful day. God bless.